um, that, that, that would, in effect, supercharge our business or superscale our business. So Foundries as a distribution platform of, of, of data insights, uh, you know, with Palantir can go so much quicker than Weijo in terms of the, the distribution they've already built in terms of ERP platforms and in terms of the scale of Foundries. So it, it became a perfect partnership where the core discipline of processing real-time data it re- remains as Weijo. That, right. that is our core IP. But then we're now working with, with the likes of Palantir's Foundry platform to, to supercharge our distribution. The first use case is actually in the EV space where we've announced something called the EV infrastructure operating system. And, you know, and what we're learning there is that there's this real sort of... Um... Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going to be diving into Foundry templates. And that distribution engine that the CEO of Weijo is referring to is, in my opinion, driven by Foundry templates. Inside Foundry, you can take application modules you've written in their visual tools like Workshop, their no-code tool, or in code repositories or any other feature and package it up as a template which can then be imported and used by any other Foundry user into different Foundry installs. One could imagine this powering a sort of um, app store for enterprise in a way that cannot be done today with traditional SaaS that's integrated typically through a bunch of RESTful web services. The RESTful web services, for people who don't know, are these application programming interfaces or APIs that are called, and you generally have to stitch all this integration layer together by calling these REST APIs. But Foundry is giving you a complete software stack out of box that can be distributed among a consortium of Foundry users. To me, this makes their entire go-to-market strategy make a hell of a lot more sense because the network effects for people building these templates for existing Foundry customers will be massive and it could support the next generation of startups built on Foundry. It could be the backbone of engineers who are raised on Foundry. So get ready, everyone, for Foundry templates. All right, here we go. We're going to create a new template. Uh, And I chose one of the um, projects. I think it was the Aviation Metrics project. Uh, Let's see here. Yeah, because this one includes a code repository. So like in the first video, I was showing you could create code repositories. And there you see the um, Aviation Metrics code repository along with all of the data sets that it created. And what we're going to do is we're going to export that work as a template. Um, And here I'm just selecting um, where I'm going to go ahead and export the template to. And um, then I'm also just defining some basic input here about what it is. It's just a test template. And then I'm going to give it a name uh, that the launched project will get when you launch a new project from that template. So that's the default name that will be included. And then I just wanted to verify that it actually got import or that it got ex- uh, created correctly. There's a versioning system built in. Uh, there's a deployment from that template if you want to deploy it. And then there's an export feature if you want to export it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and export this template locally and then try re-importing it into Foundry as if we were another Foundry user. They do give you a security warning here because you are exporting um, some of your, you know, the code you created. There's no data being exported, but there are schemas being exported. Um, And then I'm going to go ahead and import that from my local uh, file system. And so all you do when you import a template is you grab the archive that was generated during the export process. You go ahead and just uh, uh, drag and drop, and you just uh, hit the upload button, and it will automatically um, create all the, or upload that template into Foundry. And here we're just uploading the upload finished. And then I wanted to see what was created um, once we imported it. And I can see that that aviation's metric, (laughs) aviation's, aviation metrics project template is down there. See right there. That's where it got imported. Next, um, I wanted to see that was in my template list too. So like it's showing up in the template list. And the next thing I want to do, I did here is I needed to import it. So I'm importing it here and I had to fulfill the data sources that were missing. So you'll see um, when I close this dialog here in the lower left hand corner, there were data sources, flights and aircraft. I just had to connect those and it gives you a UI to connect those. And then I'm just reviewing the artifacts that will be created when I deploy this thing. 
and I'm verifying that my data sources look correct. I'm using clean data, and then I'm going to go ahead and deploy that template. And once it's done deploying, uh, I can access all of those template resources automatically. This to me is a huge improvement over SAS. There's no REST APIs to integrate people. You just point it at production data that's in your system and you get all of the components for that module in Foundry. So what are the impacts of <clears throat> the Foundry template system? Well, one, it looks like a pretty awesome springboard. I could imagine lots of things. I would probably build on top of that if I was a you know, product owner at Foundry or at Palantir. You know, it has the makings for um, something like an app store, in my opinion. And like, think of the product space for data analytics right now. Like you have so many tools. Dude, just think Google Analytics, right? Google Analytics has a pay version that starts at 150000 a year. Imagine you like went to different industry verticals. Like let's take gaming, for example, because I'm going to be building Foundry for gaming as my demo application. What if I built all of the analytics engines to analyze my telemetry data as a Foundry template, then exported that for sale, right? And if you want to build a gaming company on the gaming framework that I'm going to show demoed with my, with, uh, for Foundry for gaming, you simply incorporate that template into your Foundry instance, and you've got out of the box, probably the premier analytics engine purpose built for what you're doing. You don't need to go buy a general analytics engine anymore like Google Analytics and stumble through a hundred different ways to not make that tool work as you uncover what needs to be done. Think of all of the industries though where that's possible. To me, this is like, this is how their SPAC strategy is starting to make sense to me. Because now I start to understand, oh, I get it now. You actually could enable that this kind of new startup culture, that your new group of startups that are gonna take advantage of all these network effects you've created with all these industry verticals where people are using your product. Take Hyundai Heavy Industries. How many problems could a person building Foundry templates solve for all of the people that are gonna be part of that consortium, right? So like, it's really possible that, they're, that they are playing some kind of 4D chess and that this sort of ecosystem they envision for Foundry is really what they're building. Total speculation on my part, but I really see this as an extremely powerful tool that could rewrite the rules of SaaS.